Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're going to be repairing this Oberheim DSX sequencer. The DSX is a cool little sequencer that connects the Oberheim OB series synths via this computer interface on the back. It also has eight sets of CV and gate outputs to control other stuff. So I bought this DSX in a for parts or repair listing. Usually when I pick up broken gear, the first thing I do is to remove any batteries. There's a good enough chance that the batteries have already leaked and I don't want the situation to get any worse. With this particular one, I forgot to take the battery out when I bought it. And since the DSX uses a NICAD battery, of course the battery leaked by the time I got to it. So I've already cut the battery out of this one. So to get to the battery, you remove these two screws from here and here and then you can fold the top open. And normally you'll see the battery here. I've cut the battery out and properly disposed of it, but you can see that there's some battery acid left behind in this general region here that damaged the circuit board. Before I made this video, I figured I would fire this up and see where it stands. So I turned it on and it booted up just fine. One of the displays seemed bad, but I was pretty stoked because things were looking good. Then the displays and LEDs started flickering, and then came the crackling and the smoke. Uh, I hadn't literally intended to fire it up, but that's actually what started to happen. So for the entertainment of all of you, I grabbed the camera and turned it on again, and this is what I saw. So what was going on there is this leaked battery goop down here was creating a short circuit. Had I left it on much longer, stuff would have been burned up. So this leaking NICAD battery situation with these is a huge fire hazard. So in this video, we're going to clean up the damage caused by the leaking battery. We're going to recap the power supply. Uh, we're going to test and repair any other issues with the sequencer. And then we're going to try out my solution to leaking batteries. But first, let's get started with the cleanup from this battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this board out. So we're going to remove connectors here. We're going to remove the ribbon cable from up here that connects the display and switches board. We're going to, with an IC extractor, remove this uh, cable from its socket. This is the computer interface. And we're going to remove this connector here. So here's that area of the board that got damaged by the battery acid. So you can see it's really bad here. And I had actually uh, kind of sopped up some of the liquid that was there. Um, that was what was causing these shorts here. You can see kind of here where things started to get fried because there was a short. And that's what we were seeing in the, uh, the uh, shocking video that I showed. Um, but you can see, like, this I didn't clean up. There, There's, you know, there's liquid there and that that was what was causing that that short circuit but we're going to need to get this corrosion off of all these traces so it comes along here it comes up here there's some back here there's some over here fortunately these uh, memory chips um, their sockets are okay uh, the voltage regulators look okay so there's just a few damaged components in this area and some traces here and here that we're going to need to clean up. So in terms of components I'm going to be removing, since I'm going to be redoing the power supply anyway, I'm going to cut these filter capacitors off. And then the ones that uh, have pads or traces that are damaged by the battery acid, I'm going to remove. So I'm going to remove the large resistor, the jumper, uh, these diodes here pretty much. And then that looks like it should be okay. I don't think I need to take this transistor out. So I'm just going to cut those off the board and then we'll clean up the battery acid. So here's a little vinegar and I'm going to just kind of clean up this general area with the vinegar first. You see it's kind of cleaning stuff off but it's not going to do a good enough job to prevent this from coming back. Even if I were to let it sit on there it's still not going to do a good enough job. So we'll do a first pass with the vinegar and then we'll, uh, we'll really get rid of this corrosion. Dry rag, wet rag, 
dry rag. And now it's probably at the point where it wouldn't be sparking again if we were to plug it in and turn it on. But I'm not happy with uh, all the corrosion that's still left behind, uh, even after we cleaned it with some vinegar. Um, no matter how long we let the vinegar sit, I still wouldn't be happy with it. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do to prevent this corrosion, to get rid of it and prevent it from coming back. So I've got some fine grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the, the board here. You can see it's kind of coming up. And I'm going to sand it down until I see the copper crack. Then I know I'm getting all the corrosion off. Basically, I'm seeing shiny metal. And this is going to be good and not come back and corrode further. And in some cases, when the corrosion is, is really bad, you may need to sand down so far that you actually sand through the traces, in which case you're going to have to repair the traces. But this one isn't, isn't all too bad. clean it up a little bit and see see where we stand. By the way, this dust is probably not something you're going to want to breathe since it contains lead and other stuff. I'm still not quite satisfied with this area here. It's, uh, I don't see any corrosion, but I'd, I'd really prefer to see shiny copper. And here's the board after the sanding and the cleaning of the sanding and everything like that. So all that battery corrosion that was down here is gone. Uh, there is some damage to the traces here where they kind of got fried here and here, which is what you saw happening when it was sparking. Uh, but all the corrosion around where the components were and up here by the memory chips is gone and it won't come back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, desolder the holes where I cut the components off. So taking a look here at the schematic, I'm actually going to be able to get away without replacing all these parts that I cut out. So basically what we have is we have a 5 volt rail here, then we have a 12 volt rail here, and then using uh, there's the battery and a Zener diode kind of creates the 5 volt memory uh, rail which powers the, uh, the RAM chips when the synthesizer is turned off. But when the synthesizer is turned on, the 5 volt memory chip gets powered from uh, the 5 volt rail through this uh, 1N34A diode, which is a, a, a germanium diode, which has a lower forward voltage drop than a regular diode, silicon diode. So what we're going to be able to get away with, we're going to be get away with replacing this half watt resistor, which we cut off, this diode, uh, obviously the battery, the Zener diode, and this diode. So of all that stuff I cut out over here, let's take a look. Out of all this stuff I cut out, I'm just going to have to replace the jumper and the germanium diode, which was here. So the half watt resistor and then these three other diodes. I'm just going to leave out. Uh, and then I'm going to put in the, the, the new capacitors for the filter capacitors here, here, this general area.
And there we have it. Battery corrosion cleaned, power supply rebuilt, components damaged by battery corrosion replaced. Time to put it back and test it out. So I powered the board back up and actually same as before in this same area we had some uh, sparking and some smoke coming up. So uh, what these these two lines here are are the uh, uh, outputs of the bridge rectifier. They're the unregulated 12 and minus 12 volt voltages. And with my multimeter if I test between the two rails, I get a pretty low resistance, 52 ohms. So there is something going on here. And I took out the bridge rectifiers to see if maybe one of them had shorted. Uh, but even with the bridge rectifier out, there's, there's still a short circuit here. So since I've taken these out anyway, I'm going to upgrade them. So I'll throw the old ones away. They tested fine. Uh, so we have a short circuit somewhere uh, between the uh, minus 12 and 12 volt unregulated rails and uh, there's not a whole lot of components here that uh, that could be responsible for that uh, one possibility is actually there's there's physically uh, some kind of short here um, maybe caused when a thing is sparked due to the uh, battery acid uh, but the first thing that I'm going to do is actually I'm going to uh, to cut this segment of trace uh, for both the uh, minus 12 and 12 volt rails and uh, and we'll see if the problem goes away uh, and then if not we'll see if it if it's before or after that I mean there's really nothing before it so if this doesn't resolve it then the problem is going to be after it and that leaves pretty much just the voltage regulators but what we'll do is we'll cut these traces and we'll see So I cut one trace, just this um, uh, plus 12 volt unregulated rail right here. So now if we hold the multimeter on the minus 12 rail and we can test each side of this. So the 12 volt unregulated before the cut has a short circuit. The 12 volt after the cut does not have a short circuit. So there's something, this line pretty much just runs right back to this hole. And this hole underneath doesn't, uh, you can't see. This hole underneath, it, 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 there's no trace on the bottom. So, so pretty much we've kind of identified that there's a short circuit somewhere along here connecting these two traces. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut, cut the trace here and, uh, and, and see if the short circuit somewhere in this segment of trace. So now we've abandoned this stretch of this trace and we can see before the, the first cut there's no continuity between the unregulated rails and after that stretch there's no, tr no continuity but in between there is. So we're going to take a wire from here over to here and then we'll have corrected this short circuit that's uh, where, where these traces physically melted together somehow uh, along this stretch of, uh, of track. All right, so I put some new bridge rectifiers in. These are the uh, beefed up ones that I use for the OB series since. I, I don't think they need to be that beefy, but um, why not? I mean, these old ones, I could have put them back. They're actually working, but uh, you know, if I took the effort to take them out, I might as well just replace them since they're pretty old and they're cheap and now they're upgraded. So the only thing left to do is to uh, install this jumper wire and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, basically I tin the wire that I'm going to be using as a jumper wire. And then I'll put a little blob of solder on the board where I'm going to connect it. There. And let's go over here. And uh, then I'll just tack this down. Since they're both tinned now, they'll, uh, they'll bond pretty easily. 
I can use a tweezers to hold it in place. And we'll do the other side. So now this shorted trace should be repaired. So from the positive 12 volt unregulated, uh, we have continuity through our jumper thing. Uh, the minus 12 volts, there's continuity. We never cut any traces there. Uh, but between the 12 and minus 12, there's no longer a short circuit. So we repaired the short circuit here, and now we should be able to, to boot this DSX up. All right, so since we think we've taken care of this short circuit, presumably now we should be able to boot it up, and nothing will catch on fire, and with any luck we'll have all of our power rails. So I've got my multimeter, I've got the black lead clipped onto this capacitor here, which is uh, connected to ground. Uh, and then I can probe these different test points. There's, they're labeled little squares on the circuit board, minus 12 volts, 12 volts, 5 volt memory. And tucked away over here is the 5 volt rail. So we can power this up, and nothing's catching fire, which is a good sign. And let's test, minus 12 volts is at minus 12.42 and these are from fixed voltage regulators so that amount of precision is is within tolerance and there's nothing we can do to adjust it and it doesn't need to be any more precise than that so 12 volts we've got 12.12 .12, which is good 5 volt memory we're at 4.65 which is fine uh, remember we're expecting it to be one germanium diode drop below 5 volts um, because this, uh, this little germanium diode here drops the voltage by about 0.4 volts. So now we'll check the 5 volt rail and that is pretty much smack on, smack, uh, right on target there, 5.001 volts. And with the single turn trimmer that's there, if I try to touch it, I'm actually going to make it worse. So this is, this is perfectly fine. So all our power rails are uh, correct and stable. And uh, let's take a look here. It says ConStar Synth. So it should be saying Connect Synth, but what probably is going on here is one of these displays is bad, and that's uh, very common. So what we're going to do is we're going to change out this display first before we continue our troubleshooting. So to get to the display to repair it, uh, we're going to have to take this board out. So again, we'll disconnect this ribbon cable here. And then there's a bunch of uh, nuts that we're going to have to remove here. And I'll go through and do that and we'll take the board off. And there's the board. Uh, one thing you're going to want to be careful of is there are some standoffs here. And uh, if you were to close the lid, they'd all go falling into your uh, sequencer. So do yourself a favor and take them off first. So the displays that are used by the DSX and DX and DMX, they're, they're really lousy. There are these uh, LED type displays that, that have some decoding thing built into them. So you feed it some uh, binary data and it determines which segments to turn on. They're, they're really lousy looking and uh, they're, they're very failure prone. Um, for this we're just going to replace it with the original. I have some of these because I do repairs on these all the time. Uh, if there's interest I could uh, pop, perhaps come up with a uh, uh, replacement screen that's more modern and, and decent looking than, uh, than these old uh, LED ones. So we're going to remove the bad display, which was this, um, which was this second one. So I'll just turn it over and desolder it. I'm going to clean up the original flux residue that's still on the board from when they soldered these things at the factory. Looks like the flux residue made it to both sides of the board. But we'll get it nice and clean before we solder our new part on. Yuck. 
All right, so uh, there is a polarity to these parts, and uh, they're marked with a little uh, square here, which marks pin one. So uh, we're going to make sure that that matches uh, those squares on the other ones here. And uh, we'll flux this up and solder it in place. So I'll put the board back in, first reinstalling those little standoffs. I didn't install all the screws in case I need to take the board out for further repair. Similarly, I didn't screw the one on the bottom back in either in case I need to do more stuff to it. But let's fire it up and see if the display is fixed. Here it goes. No sequence in memory. Connect synth. Things are looking really good. So now what we need to do, do is we need to test the DSX. And what we're going to do to test the DSX is we are going to use the DSX test ROM. So you can get this DSX test ROM on my website, synthchaser.com, and it allows you to test all the internals of the DSX, the memory, uh, the DAC, uh, the switches, uh, stuff like that. So we're going to go through that, and uh, I'll show you how to install it and how to use it. So to install it, we're going to replace our factory ROM uh, in this slot here. Um, ROM 0, we're going to replace it with this test ROM. So with that test ROM installed, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And uh, it says DSX test EP ROM, which is a, a good sign. It means that it's booted into the testing firmware. And then we can access the tests by pressing the numbers at the top. I haven't screwed this board back on, so it's a, there's some give to it. Uh, but we'll start here with test zero, which is a memory test. When I press that, it goes and it tests all the different memory chips. It says memory complete because all the memory tested out okay. If there was a, an error with a particular memory chip, it would tell you which RAM chip is bad, and then you go and replace that. So next we're gonna test the, uh, we're gonna do the interrupt test. Oh, to get out, sorry, to get out we have to hit stop, and then we get back to the main menu. Now we can press one and go to the interrupt test. And it says interrupt checked. So uh, that means uh, there's no problem there. If there was a problem, it would say interrupt error. So that's the real-time clock interrupt that it tested. Now we're going to test the computer interface. So we'll get back to the menu, and number two tests the computer interface. So it's going to say connect synth uh, until we connect it to a synthesizer or, or give up. Um, uh, right now I don't want to drag the uh, OBXA over. We'll do that a little later. Um, but when you connect a synthesizer, it says interface test, and uh, you know otherwise, if it's not connecting to the synthesizer, like right now, and there's no synth connected, it'll continue to say connect synth. So let's go back to the main menu. So now we're going to test the LEDs. Button three it says all LEDs are on, and indeed they are. So back to the main menu, and uh, test four tests the uh, display here. So it kind of uh, loops through all the different characters on the displays. And if there were any bad ones, you'd be able to spot them. But uh, everything is looking real good there. So we'll go back to the menu. The next test is for the DAC. So we're going to have to connect some stuff here to the back of the synthesizer. First, we're going to make sure that the gate is OK. So I've connected this quarter inch cable into one of the gate outputs. It doesn't matter which one you use. And uh, we're going to verify that the gate is present on that cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the DAC test by hitting 5. So now it says DAC test 0 volts. But right now we're just going to make sure that there's a gate present here on the uh, quarter inch cable that we plugged into one of the gates. So we're going to measure it with our multimeter. Ground is going to go on the sleeve and the red is going to go on the tip. You can see on our multimeter we have 12 volts, which is the uh, correct gate for the DSX. Uh, you can also, I believe, uh, invert the gate, but uh, that's not a very common configuration. You can do that with the dip switches inside the machine. 
So there is a gate there. So now I'm going to move my quarter inch cable over to one of the CV outputs and we'll continue the DAC test. So I moved the quarter inch cable over to a CV output. And what we're going to do now is we're going to verify and calibrate the DAC. So it says DAC test zero volts, which means that our output should be at zero volts. So let's test with the multimeter. And we're at five millivolts. Let's see if we can get that a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll open up SX and we're going to calibrate the trimmer. So the couple trimmers that we're going to adjust are right here. This is the initial voltage trimmer and this is the, uh, the scaling trimmer. So we're going to try to get this first trimmer set so this is exactly zero volts. And because uh, it's a single turn trimmer it's going to be kind of tricky. Barely touching it. I overshot it by a couple of millivolts. There we go. Zero volts on the nose. Now let's, uh, let's test this thing as it scales up. So we can raise the, the DAC output to one volt. And uh, as you see there, it's, it's one millivolt off, which is fine. Two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts. So it's, it's not scaling perfectly. So let's, um, let's adjust the, the, uh, the scaling trimmer, which I can get a smaller screwdriver for. That's a multi-turn trimmer. There we go. Now let's go back down to zero volts and make sure that we don't need to adjust that initial, oops, that we don't need to uh, adjust the initial trimmer again. And it's at one millivolt, which is fine. So we can take this all the way up to uh, nine, nine volts. You see that we're, we're still scaling perfectly there. So the DAC test is okay and the DAC is now calibrated. So the next test we're going to do is test number six, which is the metronome test. And it basically makes the metronome click like that. So we'll turn that off. Uh, and then number seven is the keyboard note test. So what you can do is if you have the keyboard connected, you can press a note on the keyboard and it, on the display of the DSX, it'll tell you what note you pressed. Uh, there is no test eight, oh, cassette test, I guess, um, and the external clock test, but we're not going to test those. So things are looking pretty good with this DSX now. So before I hook up an OBXA, there's one last thing I want to take care of, and that's the battery situation. Recently, I introduced my battery eliminators for the OB series of synths and the DX and DMX drum machines. With these, you replace the RAM chips with my modules, and you can get rid of your battery backup. So what I've done with this DSX is I've installed a bunch of these modules to replace all of the old RAM chips. So now I don't need to put a battery backup back in, and I'll never need to worry about the leaking batteries again. All right, now let's test this out with a synthesizer. So I've got the DSX connected to an OBXA using the special ribbon cable that you can buy on my website. So first we're going to turn on the DSX, and you can see it says Connect Synth. So now we'll turn on the OBXA, and Connect Synth goes away and it says Oberheim DSX. So let's record a simple sequence. Uh, the synth is a couple arms length away and, and I can't play anyway, so I'm not going to try to do anything musical, uh, but just test this DSX for functionality. So now we're going to hit a few buttons on the DSX to assign a sequence and a track, and it asks us which voices from the synthesizer we want to use for recording. So you can see this is a six voice OBXA that I've got connected here. There's no voice eight, uh, eight and four to select. So uh, we'll go ahead and record in a very simple sequence. And we can play it back. And uh, with the battery eliminator, we first can power off the synthesizer, power off the sequencer, and then power everything back up. And even without the battery, it helps if I hit auto-tune on the synthesizer, but um, the sequencer is working.
the DSX has more features like editing, merging, looping, and stuff like that, but this is a repair video, so I'm going to leave the demoing of that to someone else. So in this video, we repaired a smoking short-circuited DSX, cleaned up some nasty battery corrosion, and made sure it's never going to come back with the battery eliminators. We rebuilt the power supply, replaced a broken display, and tested everything out with the diagnostic ROM. So now this cool little sequencer is back to life and ready for someone to make music with. This DSX is going to be for sale on my website, SynthChaser.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this look inside the Oberheim DSX. This has been SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.